Level 2 Gym Instructor Health and Safety Worksheet. Hi, I'm Hayley from Parallel Coaching and in today's video we're going to explore the Health and Safety Worksheet that is part of the Active IQ Level 2 Gym Instructor Worksheets. This is a particular question that people get stuck on a lot when they're completing it and it's not necessarily because it's a hard topic or because it's a difficult thing to understand. Mostly it's because the questions how they're worded and understanding exactly what the question is asking from you. So that's what we're gonna to explore today. I've brought the questions up on screen so you can see them and you can go through them with me. And this is gonna really help you know exactly what to put in those boxes so that you can confidently pass your worksheets. As part of this um, worksheet that you need to do, it's part of the Active IQ Health and Safety section. There is a series of questions before this whereby you answer those as one or two mark answers. But then at the very back of that worksheet is this section whereby it's assignments. And this is where people get stuck. And this is because it's asking you to apply your knowledge. It's asking you to basically explain what you can see in some real life scenarios and apply the knowledge that you've had from the theoretical knowledge of the from your manual or from the worksheets, and then use that here in a vocational situation so it's based on being in the gym environment. So as we go through this, there are four tasks and you can see them on screen. Um, and these four tasks, as you go through them, are really simply laid out. But let's look at each one individually. The very first task you can see here is about identifying four hazards in the gym. Now, here you can see an image whereby someone is moving inside the gym and there's lots of hazards around the area. Your job is to circle these hazards. This bit's quite straightforward. You can see that somebody is leaning forward in potentially an unsafe position. You've then got the glass of water on the bench. You've got obstacles on the floor in terms of dumbbells and jumpers, and you've also got trailing wires. So these are the four hazards that you need to circle in order to show that you understand what hazards are. But it's task two that often people find the hardest. And for this, you need to understand the five stages of a risk assessment. Now, these are detailed inside your manual. So you might have a physical manual or an online manual or some e-learning that you're using. However, you've been given the information and the knowledge about health and safety, this is where you're going to find the answer. So you're looking for the five stages of a risk assessment. And this goes down on that first column. So you'll see on screen there is a first column here where my icon and where my cursor is. And this is basically a list of five items that are the first or the five stages of a risk assessment. And this is generic. So the first one is to identify hazards. The second is to decide who might be harmed. The third is to evaluate the risks and decide on what you need to do. The fourth is to record the findings and then implement them. And the fifth is to review the assessment and update as required. So they're the five stages and you do that with any risk assessment that you're doing in a gym environment. But then on the next column, you need to apply that to a, re a relationship to a hazard, which is inside the image that you've already circled. So for example, you might pick trailing wires. That would then go next to on the next column. So you can see relationship to the hazard, what are the five stages? So you take it through a risk assessment through the five stages based on one hazard. So if my hazard is trailing wires, for example, I would write that in the top right hand box on the right hand column. So it says step one is identify hazard, relationship to the hazard, I would write trailing wires. Then the second one down is about deciding who might be harmed, that's gonna be clients or staff. Then the third one is about evaluating risks. So you're gonna say what might happen here if somebody could slip, trip or fall over the wires. And then also you're deciding on the precautions, so about tidying away the wires or giving a different alternative to getting power to that particular area. Then the fourth section is about recording findings. So here it's recording it on a um, checklist for the gym and telling the duty manager so that they can put a system in place to remove those wires. And then also review the assessment. The fifth step is going to be about um, how you regularly check. Maybe it's about gym walks, regularly going around the gym to check that there are no more wires in place. 
So it might feel a little bit like you're repeating yourself, but essentially it's asking you what are the five stages that goes in the first column. Then the second column is relating that to something from the image. And you just take one all the way through it. Then there's one final question at the bottom and it says, how should the risk be managed? Now the risk should be managed in relation to whatever you've said should happen. So that's usually like walks around the gym. Maybe it's about putting in different plug sockets in different areas relevant or using different alternatives to having wires going across the gym. So how are we gonna manage it in future? Now let's move on to task three. Task three requires you to look in depth at an image about a treadmill. And basically you're gonna do a maintenance checklist. And this is whereby you're identifying any faulty equipment and you're basically checking that it's safe to, to action or to work. Now, in this scenario, you've got to really look at the image and you can see if you really look that the wire is damaged. There is basically fraying wires as part of the plug socket that the treadmill then attaches to the wall. So as part of your checks that you would do, you would usually check all of these things on the left hand side of this table where it says electronic display or buttons are working, the treadmill belt is working, stop clip is working stop clip is working as well. So all of these things are usually checked, but you can't check that the electronic display works or the treadmill belt is moving or that the stop clip is working because these all require power to the machine. But if the cable is broken, then we cannot check this. So you're actually not going to put any entrance in the first few rows but where it says plug is free from damage, you're going to put the word no. Then you're gonna explain what is wrong in the fact that the plug or the power cable is broken. Then you're gonna say the action to be taken. So that is maybe to put it out of order. So put an out of order sign on the treadmill and tell the duty manager. And then you're gonna add your instructor initials there as well. So it's making sure that it's clear and you're not gonna have something written in every row on this table. It's more about showing where the error is because you're not able to check the other items um, and essentially the outcome is that the treadmill is placed out of order because of the damage to the wire and it just shows that you understand how to complete a maintenance checklist and then finally task number four is a little bit different and this is basically writing a letter to somebody that is going to be on your next handover on a gym session so let's just say you've done your gym shift that finishes and someone else is going to be in uh, going to be working next in the gym this is going to be your handover note so you've got to make it welcoming you've got to make it nice and friendly but you also need to include three bits of information that are detailed in bullet points so start off by saying hi haley um i hope you have a good session a good uh, good shift ahead just to let you know that there's an induction booked with john smith at 11 a.m Boxer size has been cancelled at 10.30 and I've cleaned the ladies' chain rooms, but not the men's. So you've got to explain about the three things that are in bullet points, sign it off nicely, um, have a nice shift ahead, regards, and then your name. Um, so it's just about showing that you understand how to communicate effectively and that you can proceed down information and send it on to somebody as a handover. So that's kind of the four tasks all explained that you need to know for this health and safety worksheet. As I say, people do get stuck on this. So don't worry if you've looked at it and overthought it or overcomplicated the questions. They are straightforward. It's just knowing what they particularly want as the answers and what avenue you need to go down in order to gain knowledge. The knowledge that you need is all written inside your health and safety section of your manual or your e-learning, whatever it is, via your studies that you're currently doing. If you do need help with any more of your studies, you can obviously drop a little comment below. Let me know what parts you're stuck on. If that's relating to your anatomy and physiology or preparation for your exam, then please do click the link that's alongside this video and um, to help you using our revision boot camps. These revision boot camps are all about getting you ready for your anatomy and physiology and also for your nutrition and level three exams. So all you need to do is click the link to find out more. Like I say, if you want any help with anything, please do drop a little comment below and we'll be able to help you alongside your studies. Thank you so much for joining me and I'll see you on the next video. Take care.